Hey guys. hey guys, this is Boyta, and today I want to go over a little bit about code and if you're trying to make some changes to the Tampa Monkey code. Um, two things that you might want to do is probably what you will frequently do is add a new user. So if we get a new technician, how to get them inside this code and how to reflect that in the uh, ticket listing page. Um, so as you might know, uh, Tampa Monkey is um, just JavaScript code. So if you ever need to look up um, any sort of information on how to write JavaScript, you can go ahead and there's plenty of documentation online. And then I also use a library called um, jQuery. So I import jQuery in here, and that will allow me to do some easier JavaScript type functions. Um, so this whole code here, um, there is a lot to it, I think 23,000 lines, something crazy like that. Um, but most of it is actually just the array of customers. So here you can see the big array of customers here um, that corresponds to their SLA rating, which is mostly why we use the script in the first place. Um, so you can see it's jumping from line 160 to about 23 or 24,000 almost. So that's how big that array is. Um, and all this code, you know, um, helps to generate a pretty, I guess a pretty interface for um, our ticket list page here. So it adds all these tables in here, ticket counts, things like that. Um, you can learn more about that in my previous video, just on the overview of Tamper Monkey. All right, so let's jump back into the code here. And let's take a quick look at the array. So if you expand this, um, you can see this is the array of customers. So it's basically just a list, a fancy way of a list um, that correlates um, the customer username in Illuminate to their SLA rating. And it also has their Illuminate, um, Illuminate ID in here as well. So that's all it is. Um, it is a giant list because we have a lot of customers. And um, yeah, so I imported all that from, from the list that I get from Jeff and Dan. Um, and then I import that in here. This has to be uh, in this sort of format. So first is the username, then comma, in quotes, the SLA rating, comma, um, the number of the customer, the ID in the limit. And they're all rated by commas. I kind of made it nice and easy to follow because they're all in each separate line. Um, but this, this array is then used to basically map all of our customers to their respective SLA rating. Um, so if you need to make a change or add a new, you know, change the SLA rating of let's say six hour, let's say they bought some more equipment and now they're SLA AA, this is all you really need to do in here. Um, if we made a lot of changes and we made a big, um, a big change to this list, then I did provide some instructions here um, on sort of how to do this, um, how to migrate this from, um, I guess, an Excel spreadsheet, and then you can use some online web tool to basically get it into this format. So ultimately, this will be the format that it will have to be in. So that might be one change you might make, uh, is delay rating to the customer relationship. Uh, the second one might be um, adding a new technician um, into Illuminate. So we have a list of technicians um, that we want to keep track of their ticket counts. Uh, let me go back in here. So these are all of our, our first flight repair technicians, and we want to keep track of their ticket counts. Um, so today I'm going to show you how to add a new person in here. All right, so let me start at the top. 
Um, this, this is just, just a version, version of the script. script. So, so if you make changes, um, I just change the version so we know um, I can change it to 4.5 if needed, uh, just to keep track of what's going on. Um, and this will be the page uh, that we are making changes to. So this is the URL um, that we currently have for our ticket listing page. And this is the name of the script. Um, I just call it group tickets combined. Um, the most of this stuff can basically stay the same. You can change the description in here. Um, and if someone made changes, you guys can change the name of the author, things like that. Um, all this stuff in comments um, that you see in I guess, yellow or beige is just comments, so it doesn't actually change the behavior of the script. So you can write whatever you want in here. I started a little change log in here. Um, not all of it is sort of in there, but I try to add a couple of things in there. So now we're on 4.4 um, version. Um, there's also some notes in here of what SLA rating means. So AAA customers are customers that pay over 100000 a month. Um, so those are important clients. And this chart goes all the way down to our e-clients that pay less than $300 a month. So that's what SLA ratings mean. Um, all right, so the first thing here, you see this is not actually a comment being commented out. It's sort of um, this is where we actually start our script. This is where we tell the script of what to do. So this, these are just variable declarations. Um, this one you might want to change. Sometimes we want to change the uh, the timer that the rate of the page uh, how it when it re refreshes. So currently it's set to five minutes. So this number is just in milliseconds, um, or just a little bit over five minutes. Uh, the countdown timer until the page refreshes. So if you guys want to change it to 10 minutes or one minute, you can change that number in here. Um, here's some more notes. Uh, this is actually the notes I was referring to when you'd like to add some more um, customers into, not customers, but um, yeah, I guess our clients into Illuminate um, in bulk. So these are the steps you would follow. And feel free to reach out to me as well if you have any questions about that. I'm always I'm always available and um, kind of know this in and out. So if you guys get stuck and really don't know what to do, you can definitely let me know. My email is just first and last name, voitaripa at gmail.com. So feel free to, free to reach out on there if needed. All right, some more comments in here. And here's where we have some more variable definitions. So all these bars are just ways for us to define some variables. Um, so I'll go ahead and scroll through that. Uh, here's some more styling um, variables. So this is how you style the page. You guys need to make some styling changes. You could do so in here if you know CSS. All right, scrolling down in here. Um, here's some more code that I'm not really gonna go over too much. Um, it's something that might be a little bit more complex to go over in this video. All right. So here are some more variables. Um, and here we can actually see the counters or variable counters for our technicians. So let's take Tim, for example. Um, I'll go ahead and copy and search for his um, Search for Tim and see where he appears in this code. So we can go ahead and hit Control F, and now we can see that it actually populates with Tim that I highlighted in here. And we'll go ahead and check the next instance of when Tim is present in my code here. And I'm going to go ahead and make a new line, and let's say I'm going to make a new test technician. So I'm just call it Test Tech all in caps, just so you can kind of see it easier. And I'm going to set his counter to zero. All right. All right, let's go ahead and just going to copy that, the name. 
and go to the next instance of Tim. All right. Um, here's another counter for Tim for tickets that are over 10 days old. Uh, we don't use this anymore, but something that if you guys want to re-implement this, you can. I'll go ahead and skip it for now. All right, it's also going to match on timeout, so I uh, can skip that as well. Let's go to the next relevant. Here we go. All right, so here's where I actually take um, where I look for him inside um, our ticker. So here is our fancy function. We want to go ahead and I'm actually going to copy this one because it's a little bit easier to follow. It's got the else if. Um, and this is what you want to follow. So oh, this is what, what you want to copy all the way down to this curly brace down here. Copy this section and then let's go ahead and make a new line here and copy all that code in here. All right. So in this case, we'll go ahead and replace um, Jesse with, uh, let's say the name is going to be um, Cody. So let's go ahead and use Cody. And I'll go ahead and update that counter name that we had above for Cody. Um, and this will just be the name that will display. So let's say Cody S is, so this will be the last name. Okay. And I'll go ahead and comment this out. This is only if the ticket's over 10 days old. Uh, I'll go ahead and skip this step now, but we'd create a separate counter uh, if we want to also count um, Cody's ticket counts that are over 10 days. All right, so let's go ahead and go. This is all we have to do here. Um, we don't use the color code anymore, so I did go ahead and get rid of that. So you could see this just commented out. Again, all, all the lines that are in this color are all common. So none of, those, none of this code will be actually executed. All right, so let's look at the next instance of Tim. Find next. All right, all those settings I changed. Uh, let's see here. All right, so in here, this is how I add the total ticket count. I uh, just add all the totals of each technician. So let's go ahead and put our variable in here as well which Cody's calendar is actually test tech. So hopefully that's not too confusing. I can call this Cody as well or Cody count. It doesn't really matter as long as we make that change all throughout this code here. Uh, let's go ahead and find next. All right. And then here there's an array of basically the ticket count for this technician. Um, and it populates it all into an array here. So I'll go ahead and copy this line. And on the next line, uh, all I have to do here is change this to my new ticket counter. And I'll go ahead and call this Cody. Cody S. And this is what's actually going to be displayed inside um, this page over here. And the reason I have it inside an array um, is so that I can easily sort um, these counts based on the actual amount of tickets that this technician has. So uh, that's the easiest way um, for me to make that array and have them all in order from most tickets to the least tickets. 
All right, so we made this change here. Let's go ahead and go to our next instance of Pim. All right, we don't really need to change this in here. Um, let's see if there's any other instances of Tim. Looks like it's just matching time. There's going to be one more. Well, actually. That might be it. All right, yeah, yeah that's, that's it. it. All right, so now we successfully added a new user, Cody, in here. And now Cody should have a counter. Um, so his tickets should all be counted now. So let's save it in here and go back into our ticket listing page. Let's go ahead and refresh this page. And we'll see if we see Cody populate in this table here. Wait for it to populate. And scroll down because he's not going to have any tickets right now. And there's Cody S. So this should be all you have to do to add a new person inside here. I can go through the rest of this code, but I don't think any of it will really be easy to understand or useful. Um, let's see, this is where I left off before. Um, these are all just counters, so everything is set to zero. Everything inside all these tables that you see in here, um, all these counters are actually defined inside here initially so everything is set to zero and then i do my counting or increment the counter based on if i see um, the specific criteria that i'm i'm looking for so if, for example you know um, tim and his tickets or maybe we're looking for sla AA um, clients so then we go ahead and increase those counters and things like that yeah, I'm not going to go over most of this code in here. Um, yeah, in here you can see all the technicians counters are increasing. Um, this is Cody, how we added them in here. We keep scrolling down. So there's a lot of that code. Most of this won't need to be changed or updated hopefully. I did go ahead and add some comments so if you guys want to read through all this code yourselves you can go ahead and read some of those comments in there hopefully they'll make sense. Um, and then yeah we go ahead and set all those variables back to zero after we're done sort of displaying them to the page. Yeah, most of these are just functions that I added in here uh, that might be a little bit too hard to understand for this video. And it's probably nothing that you'll really need to change or dig deep into. All right, and that's the rest of the code. Um, that should do it. So if hopefully you guys don't remove um, something like a curly, curly brace or anything like that. Otherwise, the whole code will stop working at that point. So um, this is currently the working version. So if you guys get stuck and code's not working, you might just have to go back to this version and start over. Um, one big thing to note is if uh, Illuminate makes a big change um, to the way this page is displayed, it might actually break the script, at which point it might be hard um, to get a loop to get the Tamper Monkey script working. Um, so hopefully they don't make any big updates to this page for a while so that you guys can keep using it. And um, hopefully it will help you in the future.
Like, like I said, go ahead and email me if you have any more questions. My email again is oitaripa at gmail.com. Hopefully this has been helpful for you and have a good day.